It's after midnight. It's when the fun begins. It is when the fun begins, after midnight. I think that's the best time slot of all time. <laughs> 30 years ago, that's when the fun begins. It, it really is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, 30 years ago. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, Boy, it's been an exciting week. You following politics, Chuck? Absolutely. Who can't follow politics this season? I don't know what to make of all this. I really, I really don't. And and everybody out there is divided. You're right. Just divided. It's just in, in the other one side hates the other side. They both sides they hate each other. It's. Are you noticing that? I'm noticing that. In fact, in my wife's workplace, right there, they had the strict rule: no politics, because it's really getting heated. That's probably the best way. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're fighting mad. People are fighting mad. Yeah, they hate the other side. They hate. I mean, people hate. They hate Hillary, and then the other side hates Donald. They just. They, and you can't. You can't talk a, a Hillary supporter into supporting Donald, and you can't talk a Donald supporter into into uh, supporting Hillary. You just can't do it. Not going to happen. Well, I have gone out on the street with a camera. And I found a, a couple people, and we want to do more of this. Okay. Man on the street, don't you think? I want to do oh, more I agree. Of this. I want to do man on the street. And just walk up to people with a camera and then just ask them a question. So I walked up and asked the question, Donald or Hillary? And that was it, just Donald or Hillary. And then if they just said Donald, then I have to pry a little bit. Why? Why? You know what I mean? So just, just two people. Well, uh, take a look at this. We just don't ask you, Hillary or Donald? Uh, it would if you force me and hogtie me. I guess I'd have to say Donald. Why? Because uh, Hillary is, should be really in prison. If you and I did what she did, we would be in prison. What did she do? She actually took files, took them to her house, and kept them at her house. If you and I did that, if we did it from the courthouse, we would be in jail. Other than that, would she make a great president? No, she would not. Well, what makes Donald a good president? Uh, Donald makes a good president because he's a successful business person, and he... I know, I, okay, that's... How do we know that without seeing his W-2 forms? Well, his W-2 is a personal issue. His business forms are... You look at the success of his kids, his family, you look at the kids he's raised. He still has great relationships with, with his president ex President Obama has great kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, Clinton has great kids, so having great kids doesn't really tell you much, does it? Well, it, it does in this situation. If you're looking, if you're, we're only dealing with these two people now. You look at these two people, and he has great, successful kids who are good, upstanding okay, citizens. Okay, so, so does Hillary. So that's a toss-up. No, not, not really. Hillary has a good kid. Oh, uh, she has, well. Been all the way in school. I mean, does very, very well. Yeah, I mean, she works for the foundation. Yeah. Well, and, well. What, what foundation? I don't know, some foundation. The, the, the Clinton uh, Crime Family Foundation? You mean that foundation? Okay, that foundation. You know, why did they never talk about the, the new DNC? I don't know, why? They never talked about it because it's full of corruption. The, the Clinton uh, Family Foundation is full of corruption. Nah, do we really know that? Or is yes, that just, we is do. That just... They take money from all these countries that you and I would never be allowed to do what we're doing right now in. Okay, so Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. <laughs> that guy was nuts. Was he nuts? Well, we got one more. Now, now check this guy out. Uh, Donald or Hillary? You got a binary choice? Donald Trump. Why? Because uh, I couldn't vote for her in a thousand lifetimes. Why? She's a criminal. Okay, how is she a criminal? Uh, let's see. There's 30,000 emails of, of, go of government property that she destroyed. She destroyed government property. And let's see, uh, there's Benghazi, there's Travelgate. Now we're fighting all this stuff you're saying there's, there's, she's not guilty of. Oh yeah, let's see, at best, at best, what the FBI said, let's see, she's an incompetent liar. At best. At worst, she's, uh, she's a criminal and a traitor. Okay, about 60% of the public think that exactly what you're saying right now. 60% of the public think the exact same thing about Donald. So isn't that a wash? Donald Trump is, is a buffoon, oh. but he is not a traitor. She's a traitor. So you vote for Donald? If a, in a binary choice, yes. But you want a buffoon in charge? I don't want a traitor in charge. You don't want a traitor? I don't want a traitor. But people right now are questioning his competence. 
Well, let's see. Her health is not good. She's not competent. She couldn't even keep her email straight, David. Come on. 30,000 emails and she can't keep those straight? Right. And trying to say that, oh, I just sent those to Bill. Bill can't, Bill never has emailed anything. Come on, man. You're smarter than that. So because of that, she should not be president? No, she's a traitor. And Donald should be president? No. I, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a terrible, terrible choice. I've got a traitor and, and somebody who's 1% better than she is. Got it. Man on the street, thank you very much. Thank you, now. Hello, this is Dean Lewis, Old Car City, USA, White, Georgia. We have photographers here from all over the world. We got them today from, I don't know where all. Every continent we believe has been here, and probably every state. We didn't keep up the states, we did the countries. We have them, had them this week from Germany, England, Norway, and maybe another or two, I can't remember, and then a lot of states. Come on up to Old Car City, USA. Chuck, do you carry a gun on you? I do not, but lately, my thought process has been that I'm going to buy a gun. Same here, same here. And up here where I'm in Bartow County, everybody I know carries a gun. I, I live in Paulding County, and everybody I know carries a gun, except me. Except me. I've just, but I've never had the... I've always thought people who carry a gun are living in fear. They're just afraid. Right. Afraid. But everybody I know carries a gun. And you just, in today's world, is there are crazy people out there. Absolutely. So you're thinking about getting a gun? I am. A little bitty gun for, like, ankle holster, or what do you think? Uh, no, I would probably get, like, a 9mm uh, Glock, something like that. That's a pretty good size gun. Yeah. Well, where would you, would you keep it in your car? Would you wear it? Heck no, I'd get me a hat like yours and carry it on my hip. On your hip? <laughs> no, I would probably conceal it in my car where it was there if I needed it. So you're not going to wear it? No, I'm not going to go out wearing it around the Walmart. I mean, I see people in Walmart with guns on their hips. You wouldn't have a concealed weapon on you. You, would, you don't have a need to have a concealed weapon. No. I would like to have one in my glove compartment of my automobile. Well, I read the newspaper and watch the news. Every, you know, I online all the time watching the news. And it's, I just think today, if you're going to wear a gun, now's the time. It's just, you gotta, you got to carry a gun. So I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it, but I'm undecided on the gun. I can't make up my mind what I want. I'm thinking like a 38 or something, a little nine shot, something like that. 38's a pretty big pistol, isn't it? See, I know nothing about firearms. That's why I've never owned one. No, it's not that big. It's not? Okay. Well, I don't think it is. I, I, <laughs> he knows nothing either. <laughs> I, I don't think it is. I, I mean, I don't think, but uh, it's bigger than a 22. Right. So that's what I'm thinking, 38. Six so, shooter. So I decided I want a little more information. So I went to uh, track down the sheriff of Bartow County. And I sat down with him and just picked his brain for a few minutes. Watch this. The sheriff of Bartow County, Clark Millsap. Good to see you, Sheriff. Good morning, David. How are you? Good. Congratulations in the uh, primaries. Thank you very much. We, we were blessed. We did good. How long have you been the sheriff? I'm in my 16th year, and uh, after we go and vote for ourselves in November, uh, we'll be four more years, so it'll be 20. County in good shape? County's in good shape. As far as law enforcement goes, we're a little short-handed. We're hiring right now, so if you know anybody that uh, doesn't have a criminal <laughs> record and uh, wants a job, just send them to see me because we're hiring into the jail. Um, if you've got road experience, uh, we'll look at you and maybe hire you straight to the road. Um, Things are going well. We, we've got some good, but we got some good applications now. Uh, Commissioner Taylor, when he bumped up the starting pay for the deputies, uh, it really helped us as far as our recruiting stuff goes. I wanted to ask you about concealed weapons permit. Okay. Um, what are the rules on it? How can anybody get one? Um, you can go to the probate judge's office. They'll, it's a one-stop shop. You go there and they fingerprint you and they take all your information, run your background check, and send it off to the state. And the feds will do a background check too. Um, if you're not a convicted felon, um, you can, you're eligible to get a carry permit. And I, it's my advice for everybody that doesn't have one to go get one. Now, if I can buy a gun, does that guarantee me being able to get a concealed weapon permit? Uh, no, not necessarily. Um, you can buy a gun if, if you had a dishonorable discharge from the military or if you've been convicted of family violence and it was uh, a bad situation. 
um, you may be could possibly be turned down for your concealed carry permit. Uh, you could possibly also be turned down to buy a handgun. Now, if you don't have a concealed carry permit and you go and try to purchase a handgun, um, you may be approved to purchase it, but you will have the waiting period while they do all the checks and all the balances and things like that now. And you can get a shotgun or a long gun the same day. Now, if you have a concealed permit and you go to an establishment that sells firearms, with your concealed permit and your driver's license, you'll be able to walk out the door with a handgun that day. So I, my advice is, I'm a Second Amendment advocate. I am a firm believer in our Constitution and our Second Amendment. I defend it till the day I die. Um, I want everybody who can legally own a handgun and have a carry permit to please go and purchase a firearm. To protect I'm, yourself and your family. I'm read. I'm hearing different things on the internet or on Facebook about concealed weapons, and uh, if you're pulled over by a police officer, and how to handle that. How do you handle that? Well, see, here's the thing about carrying in your vehicle. You do not have to have a carry permit to carry a firearm in your in your car. It's like they consider it an extension of your home. Now there are some rules to carrying a firearm in your car. If you have it in plain view, that's legal. But you need to remember the two-step rule. If it takes you one step of opening the glove box and reaching in and getting your gun, that's step number two. Two-step rule unless you have it in plain view. You cannot have it under the seat. You cannot have it in the pocket of the door. That's, that's against the rules. Now, if you're pulled over and you have a firearm in plain view, my advice to you is keep both hands on the wheel. And when the officer steps up, say, officer, I'm here. I have a concealed permit. I have a firearm right here on the seat beside me. That way, the officer, you've established a little trust right there off the bat because that officer doesn't know who he's approaching, doesn't know who he's pulled over other than what he gets back on the tag that he was called in. He'll know who you are from the call or the tag or who owns the car. But my advice is if you've got a firearm in the vehicle and you legally got it there, go ahead and tell that officer. That establishes that little moment of trust. Let's that officer back up a little bit because he's not so weary anymore because he knows there's a firearm in the car, but he knows you're not going to reach and get it. So it's my choice whether it's I do. It's your choice. Yeah, it is. I mean, you don't have to, but if it's on, if it's in plain view on the seat beside you and the officer sees it and you don't go ahead and tell him, it's probably going to cause a little tension right there just for a few minutes. Okay, with a concealed weapon permit, when can I pull the gun out? When you can you pull it out? When can I, if I'm in a... When, I'm, when can I pull it out and actually draw it? Are you talking about in defense of yourself? Well, let's say I'm in a convenience store and it's being robbed or I'm just in a, I don't know. So when can you, legally, when can you pull it out? If there is a felony in progress or you feel threatened in any way, you have the right under the Constitution to pull your weapon any time. Now, you know, I don't need a bunch of cowboys running around here in Bartow County mm -hmm. because, you know, I want everybody to get along. I want us all to work together to be safe. But if you're stopping a felony in progress, then you have every right under the Constitution to do that. But I don't want to get into a situation where everybody starts waving pistols around all over the place. You know, if you're going to carry your weapon, carry it legally, be safe with it. I want everybody to be trained in how to carry a firearm and when to pull it and things like that. That's why we offer a citizen's firing range today. As a matter of fact, we got one coming up uh, on the 13th. It's already full. So if people will keep up on our website and our Facebook page, we're starting back this fall with our citizen's firing range today. You come to the firing range, you get two hours worth of classroom, you get the active shooter. We'll, if you bring your weapon, we'll show you how to take it apart. We'll show you how to put it back together. We'll show you how to load it. We'll show you how to clean it and we'll let you shoot till you don't want to shoot anymore. If you don't have a firearm and you're thinking about purchasing one, we'll let you shoot ours. You can shoot our handguns, you can shoot our shotguns, you can shoot everything that we've got. Well, I'm not gonna let you shoot our automatic weapons. I mean, that, that'd, be kind of, that'd be kind of crazy on my part, but um, I want people to be trained with them. That way you'll know, because you'll get the same training that law enforcement people go. So you will know when you can pull your pistol and when you can't. Everybody, it's the Sheriff of Bartow County, Clark Millsap. Thank you very much. Thank you, David. Hey, I'm Tim. Welcome to Treasure Chest Outlet, located in Cartersville, Georgia. Come on in. Let me show you around and show you what we have. We have area rugs starting at $79. We have sofas, recliners. Recliners start at $249. We have dining room tables. We have a lot of used furniture that we take in on consignment. Come on in and check us out. We have statuary for your yard. We have a huge selection of that.
come in, you may find a bird bath that you want to take home. Cartersville, Georgia, come visit us. Check us out on Facebook. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. Uh, Dave, you know, last week we talked about uh, local talent, bringing some local talent on here. Yep. So uh, I rounded up some young guys, and uh, we went out to the Marietta Square. See, we'll go anywhere. So if, if you're out there and you're into the entertainment locally, and you are an entertainer, uh, we'd like to come and see you. So send us an email mm -hmm. right here at the bottom of the screen. Send us an email. We'll be in touch with you. We'll make arrangements. We'll make an appointment to come out and uh, capture you and uh, maybe get you on the show. You'll have to go through a screening process. We want to make sure we have quality entertainment on quality. the show. This, because this show's going into 800,000 homes all throughout the metro Atlanta area. We're all the way up here in Bartow County. We go to the Paulding, all the way to Walton on the other side of Gwinnett, all the way down to Henry County. We cover the entire metro area. Even up in Winder. Even in Winder. Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're gonna want your band on here it may you may get a job or so out of it right so these guys are called lady and it's spelled l-a-y-d-double-e -E. and they're a group of four young men and you don't hear young guys like this get together anymore and do these kind of vocal harmonies right and these guys because they stand out and they do what they do well let me pull my phone up here because i'm old now you know trying to hide my hair beautiful and so just to give you a glimpse of what they've done in the past, they opened uh, the old school event at Phillips Arena on New Year's Eve featuring the Isley Brothers, uh, Morris Day, Jeffrey Osborne, and Drew Hill. So there's some big names. Also, uh, Johnny Gill, who I think was in uh, New Edition. Really? Yeah. So they've opened for some Class A acts, and I think they're on their way. All those people you named, I don't know who any of them are. I'm so out of touch. I, it, and they bring up the Beach Boys, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones. I don't know exactly right. but who you're mentioning. I have no clue. I have no clue. Well, the guys these open for, these young men, these people I talked about, were idols to these young men. Very, so, very talented guys. Very yeah. talented. So check it out. I say whatever you need, I'll be right here in the morning. Whenever you want it in the evening, whenever you need it, when the night falls, you know that I got it. So, lady, just call me, you know that I'll do it. Walks by me every day her and love are the same the woman has stolen my heart and beauty is her name i hope that i can make you mine for another man steals your heart and once your beauty is mine I swear we would never be apart. One more time. Walks by me every day. Oh. Her and love are the same. The woman that stole my heart. She stole my heart. Her beauty is her name. I said I hope, hope that I can make you mine. For another man steals your heart. And once your beauty is mine, I swear we will never be apart. You'll always be my friend. Such a time I spent alone, lost without you. Behind us, you probably see all these cars. It's beautiful out here in the Chuck. It is. It, it is beautiful out here. It, this is the most unique photography hangout you'll ever gonna come to. What, uh, this is called Old Car City USA. In fact, Google it. You can go to their website, check it out, and it's like thirty something acres of just like 
30s, 40s, 50s cars and trees growing through them and, and photographers, photographers from all the world come here to film this and put, they put models on the top of these cars. Well, we're here. So we worked out with the owners so we can come film out here and do what we're doing right now. It's a fun place, isn't it? It is. It's a very interesting place. We thought about doing this in a studio, but we said, nah, let's go out to Old Car City. So we're at Old Car City and we're, that's what all this is behind us. I hope y'all get a good view of this. And for all you Elvis fans out there, there's a vehicle in the lobby that once belonged to Elvis, correct? Yes, there is. There is a vehicle in there that once belonged to Elvis Presley. It was like I think it was like the last car he owned or something. And the guy that owns this, he bought that car and it's in there on show, the Elvis Presley car. So if you don't want to go to Graceland, but you want to see one of Elvis Presley's old cars, this is the place to go. This is, uh, yeah, if you're into photography, you want to come here. If you're into photography and just want to film some some neat stuff, this is the place to be. Up here in Bartow County, while you're here, there's a, uh, I'm sure you've heard of it, Etowah Indian Mounds. You ever been there? I've never have. Well, the Etowah Indians lived there like uh, 1000 AD. And then there was another tribe before that, which was like 500 BC or something. And, and it was right here. I mean, right here, but 1000 AD, Indians lived here. They lived, they made these mounds and well, I went out to, and I talked to uh, uh, the people that run that place, Etowah Indian Mounds, and, and well, y'all need to just check it out. It's it's fascinating. Right up here, though, so when you come up here, go to Etowah Indian Mounds, and then check out Old Car City. Right back. We're out here at Etowah Indian Mounds. This is Keith. What's your title here, Keith? Uh, I'm technically the curator. Curator. So my name tag still says I'm the interpretive ranger. Now, tell everybody, where is Etowah Indian Mounds? Etowah Mounds is out here on 813 Indian Mounds Road in Cartersville, Georgia, just on the south end of town. How long have these mounds been here? Uh, the oldest uh, that we can tell, uh, th this particular mound set uh, started to be constructed around 1000 A.D. 1000 A.D. Yeah, there were some older mounds in the area. Uh, like the Leek Mounds over near Lads Mountain that were constructed around 300 BC. Um, that would have been the capital before they moved up into this area for the Native Americans. So and this is the actual site? This is the actual site. Wow. I mean, that's over, yeah, that's that's heavy duty. Okay, now what is, what are the Etowah Mounds? Well, there, there are several different types of mounds. Uh, there are uh, funerary mounds uh, that the elite people would have been built in, and then there's uh, habitation mounds that uh, literally build up over time as a house is constructed and falls in and another house is built over top of it and then there's what we call the platform or ceremonial mounds and these are the mounds that usually your elite people lived on top of so uh, your chief priest or uh, council buildings that your elders or your, your war council would have set on so they're basically giant foundations for buildings and the taller they are usually uh, represents uh, the more important the people on top of those mounds would be. And surrounding these are the people. Uh, yep, the people. Uh, we, we know... Or the Indians. Uh, yep, the Indians. Uh, they, they would have lived on both sides of the river, up and down. Uh, villages probably every three-fourths of a mile, half a mile apart, all up and down the, the river farming. Uh, fish traps that we see all up and down the river would have been where they were harvesting fish to eat, but they were also harvesting the fish as a way of producing fertilizer. They, they literally were the ones that come up with the idea of putting fish meal, uh, you know, in your fields to help the plants grow. They would uh, take the parts of the fish they didn't eat and bury right there in their uh, corn crops and that would produce uh, a lot of nutrients. They live in teepees or how did they live? They actually lived in houses that we call wallandob huts or uh, trench houses. Uh, they both have a similar uh, uh, shape, usually square around uh, with the uh, wall and dive houses, they would drive post into the ground and they would weave smaller sticks around it so it's like making a giant basket and then you would pack a mixture of clay, grass, moss around it, kind of like the chinking in a log house, um, all around it and as long as that stays dry with a good roof you've got a, a, a pretty nice cool house. Uh, the trench houses, they basically built, uh, dug a trench mm -hmm. in the shape of the house they would want and they would put the logs in there and kind of lean them together uh, over top of some other structures and then they would cover that with either bark or grass. Those seem to be from two different time periods. Were they a peaceful people? Uh, well, they had two chiefs. One was a peace chief and the other was a war chief. So they were peaceful part of the time and 
warlike part of the time and is probably both going on at the same time with different villages. What happened to him? Well, we know that Hernando de Soto come through the area in 1540, um, and uh, a lot of his people off and on through the area were sick. We actually know that he left uh, a member uh, of his party that was very sick uh, to the point he was about to die up in a place that's called Kusa or Kusawadi. That would have been at a site uh, about 40 miles north of here. He traveled through this area in August, so actually about this time of the year. Uh, there was a huge flooded area. Uh, the river was flooded. He stayed here for about a week. And the best we can tell, uh, not too long after here, people got very mad at him. And so uh, uh, basically they chased him down. But as far as what happened to the people, they seem to have caught those diseases that he brought through. And then uh, that, of course, in some cases destroyed the political system. And then you have infighting within the Native Americans trying to gain control. We really are not sure exactly what happened, but by the time the next explorer come through about 20 years later, uh, this site doesn't even seem to have existed. So it seems to have been abandoned by about 20 years after DeSoto come through. Is it haunted? Um, some people in the local area think it is, but the Native Americans, they've come out here and, and uh, every time that we do archeology, span they uh, do some ceremonies to put the spirits at rest. So shouldn't be haunted. This is Etowa Mounds. That's Etowa Indian Mounds or Etowa Mounds? Um, either one. Uh, different people have referred it to different things. Um, this used to be, of course, called the Tumlin Mounds up until the time the Tumlins sold the property in 1953 and the state bought it. So it's uh, either the Etowa Indian Mounds or the Etowa Mounds. And everybody, everybody's party. welcome out here. Everybody's welcome. All right. Keith, everybody, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Hello, this is Dean Lewis, Old Car City, USA, White, Georgia. We have photographers here from all over the world. We got them today from, I don't know where all. Every continent we believe has been here, and probably every state. We didn't keep up the states, we did the countries. We have them, had them this week from Germany, England, Norway, and maybe another or two, I can't remember, and then a lot of states. Come on up to Old Car City, USA. We've got some good news. This is our second episode. We've got two more here in this time slot. Well, the advertising's coming in. It's working. Um, people like the idea. They like the concept. They like how far out it's going. So we've got sponsorship. We're moving to 8.30 in the mornings on Sunday. Sunday at 8.30, right before all the new shows start on this channel, channel 29. That's exciting. It is exciting. But we got to step it up, Chuck. Right. See, we're really loose right now because it's after midnight. We're, we're loose. Do we have to put a tie on? No, no tie, man. <laughs> no tie. You know what I'd like to do, though, Chuck? I'd like to try it. We ought to try it one week. Get two redneck crazies with us. We'll sit at a round table and we'll have like a, a redneck news show. A new show. Like they do in the other shows, we'll put our own panel together. We'll yell at each other and call each other names and talk politics. Can we bring a referee with a whistle? Oh, that'd be exciting. Yeah, we, we need, <laughs> we, that would be really, yes, that'd be a lot of fun. But we are moving 8.30 on Sunday. That's like in three weeks. Three weeks we're moving, so we're not going to be here at this time slot, even though I, I love this time slot. I do, I like this time slot. And so maybe they need to send an email, and then we can send you a reminder. Put the email address right up here, Chuck. Right. You got the email up there? It's there. Okay, had fun, man. Same here. See y'all. Good night. <laughs>